Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick video, um, just a review on the X Mid One Person by uh, Drop and Dan Durston. Can you see me? Yeah. Um, I'm recording on my phone just because I uh, I'm kind of in a hurry. I gotta I'm gonna be taking off. I got off the trail, um, I guess about a week ago, and it was just a personal choice. I wasn't ha enjoying it anymore. I wasn't having fun, and I felt like it was getting dangerous for me and a lot of those hazards I was creating myself but uh, a lot of them were, were things I couldn't I couldn't do anything about so uh, such as weather and whatnot but that's not what this is about uh, said I just want to do a review and talk about my experience with it so for the most part this is how I kept everything um, of course my trekking poles and then my tent sticks which I traded out for uh, for MSR groundhogs, um, I got four of the regular size, the full, I think those are seven and a half inch, if I uh, recall correctly. And those are for my corners. And then for my vestibules, I usually use the shepherd's hook that they came with. And then guy lines, I have uh, two mini groundhogs. And, uh, yeah, I just found that those work a lot better than what I was sent with the tent, and that's just because the ones that were given were titanium, and they just, they ended up bending, and I found that out, I don't know, I'm not sure if I uh, put that in my last video, but I found that out before taking off, and I'm glad I did. Uh, another, another YouTuber had commented and mentioned that it's something I wanted to change up before I took off. I just went ahead and took his advice and uh, I'm really glad that I did. So if you have this tent, if you're going to go out on a long hike, make sure you change out the tent stakes to uh, something similar. I I highly recommend the groundhogs. I didn't have any issues with them. Um, the only time they came out was if I was in extremely loose sand. But even at that, a lot of times I didn't have any problem if I uh, was able to find a rock. So here I have my uh, tent inner, my mesh body. And I kept this in the stuff sack that was provided. Um, and then here I have my rain fly, my, uh, my emergency blanket, which I use as a ground cloth. And then some extra guy line, which I also use to set up in a... Uh, in a stargazer setup, which I I may not show that um, just out of time. Uh, if you want me to, I can do another video on that and how I set that up and what I did to be able to do that. But uh, let me go ahead and set this up. I'm not going to set this up in a, in a video just because there's enough videos online that you can look at and watch and it's nothing incredible. But, uh, I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Man, is it hot. Uh, I'm in the middle of Texas summer right now, so I am burning up. Uh, it's humid. It's probably about 90, and it's only, like, 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but anyways, so, went ahead and set up. And, uh, I apologize for the high grass. But it looks still almost identical to what I had whenever I left. Um, I probably got a little bit better on the pitch. But I have extremely little bad things to say about this tent. It is an amazing tent. Um, I just set it up in six minutes. And that is uh, six minutes of putting an inner in like it wasn't already in. So... That is a full setup in six minutes, uh, aside from guy lines, and I, uh, I can't complain. There's my old dog. He's like 15. Give him a break. Um, so, one of the bad things, we'll go through uh, the cons first, is the guy lines. Um, I enjoy the line locks, but the, this guy line itself is kind of a cheap material. And so, I did have to, uh, to, it broke a few times and I had to fix it. 
um, on both sides. On the ones on the ground, on the corners, I never had that issue. So, I mean, it's not a big deal. I, it's not something I was super upset about and I knew I'd be able to change. Uh, one of the big deals, though, was for me, is right, right here. If you can uh, see that, so that is a hole. And this is on both of the peaks, and this side, you can see it even better. And uh, I already put some gear tape on there. Now this is an issue that I talked to, uh, to Durst and Gear about. I had messaged them while I was out on the trail. This had happened maybe about, I'd say around night, night 50, night 45 or so. And uh, I found out that it's a, um, essentially a defect. So what happens is that side, you have this spot where the trekking pole goes up. That eyelet is a little bit too big for my trekking pole. So depending on the side size of the trekking pole, the width right here at the top where it comes to a point will uh, make the difference. And if it's too small, it'll push too far through that eyelet and uh, poke through, start rubbing, even on that reinforced bit, and, uh, and cause a hole. And so that's what happened. It was just a matter of, uh, of time for me for it to happen, and I didn't realize it was occurring. So I kept setting up my, uh, my tent trekking pole uh, with the point up first for uh, weeks and weeks and weeks, and that was a result. So uh, even now, I just I, I changed after I noticed that. And like I said, I talked to uh, Durston Gear. They will send me a warranty. Um, their customer service is amazing. They uh, they let me know it was it. They knew about the issue. It'd been an issue. Um, essentially, I just got an old model whenever uh, I ordered it. So that's a that's a problem. That's not a problem anymore. So on the new models, on the 2020 model, the 2021 model that'll be coming out in fall, that uh, has been resolved. They uh, they put more reinforcement. So it's not going to be uh, a problem. Uh, a set. As far as issues go, I had just a little bit of a, you can kind of see on the mesh, just around here, a little bit of issues going on. I did have one significant hole that occurred here that I sewed up with floss, uh, and another one right here that I didn't sew up. Those resulted in me waking up to a... Uh, spider in my tent which i didn't appreciate but that's uh, that's regular wear and tear that's not anything that uh, i can blame dressing gear for and i'm not going to the tent aside from that has been incredible um like i said it took me six minutes to set up and that's having to go and clip the inner end because i didn't have it already in and um without that just setting up the rain fly and had i had the inner already put in that would have been three minutes so, uh, three minute setup time. I've set this up multiple times just as a rain fly by itself, as shade. Um, and we managed to get four people and a dog, or two dogs, four people and two dogs, to, uh, to lay inside comfortably and uh, get out of the New Mexico heat. So, I can't complain about the size at all. Uh, what I did find out though is that you see this guy line here I had attached so if you put that guy line on that point right there and I'm talking about this orange one down here if you put that guy line down there what that does is uh, you can make it to where it either brings the tent down and significantly closes it off if you uh have a loop tied here. You can stake that down and get it onto the ground. So again, this is thick grass, so I know it's kind of hard to tell. But uh, you can really get that down to the ground, get it low, and uh, prevent a lot of wind coming in. Or, I have a line lock on there. 
you can uh, stake it out. And I wish you could see, but you will make your vestibule, you bring the wall out about eight, nine inches, and make it much larger, even though it's already a massive vestibule. And uh, you can do that on both sides, and honestly, if you did that, you could probably get five people inside. <clears throat> As just a rain fly. Um, for rain, wind, sun protection. And, uh, but yeah. Uh, I didn't have any wear and tear on the bottom. I used this for about 60 nights consecutively. With the exception of, uh, zeros in town. The pocket on the ridge line... I'm not a big fan of. I know some people are. I don't like it. Uh, it's there. I used it every night. I put my watch in there. I put my headlamp in there. I would much rather, for me personally, I'd rather have a pocket here on both sides. One on this side. One on the other side. And, uh, and I would utilize that a lot more. As opposed to the ridge line pocket. But... I did use it, so I can't complain too much. Uh, I had shown the the hack that I'd seen online, where uh, you kind of attach this to here. It stretches out your inner, gives you a lot more room. I did use that a few times. Uh, I found out that doing that doing very long distance hikes, uh, you get to the point where you just don't care. It doesn't matter anymore. <clears throat> but aside from that like I said the uh, the only things that I didn't like were uh, that the guy lines were kind of cheap and um, the top breaking out but that's like I said an issue that's not an issue anymore and it's been resolved and uh, Durston Gear is going to help me out with getting another tent on that so I don't have any real major cons to this tent uh, the length of it was fine the the width of it was fine I didn't have any problems sleeping you know as far as condensation goes if I kept my vents open which sometimes I did sometimes I didn't or I usually did sometimes I didn't just because of the wind uh, I had zero issues with condensation if I closed one up then on that side of the tent I would get condensation uh, of the side that it had closed so but using it in rain, as with any tent that's not a Dyneema or a DCF, which even at that DCF will eventually wet out, um, I will say it doesn't take long to wet out. I would say maybe maybe an hour or two of continuous rain for the rain fly to wet out. However, the tent is designed in a way that you will not get water on you. Like you will not get wet. I, uh, we were in storm, I was in a storm for maybe four or five hours, um, that had occurred right whenever we had set up our tents and we're about to eat dinner and I, uh, I didn't get wet the entire night. So that was wind blowing and howling and all that, uh, for windshed. It does a fairly decent job. I didn't learn about tying down the vestibule, adding a guy line there, um, until much later on in my hike. Had I done that in New Mexico, I probably would have had a lot more enjoyable nights. But, um, hindsight's twenty twenty. So, uh, but as far as shedding wind, I, it was fine. I had one single night, and it was my fault where, uh, where the tent was at risk of collapsing because of a state coming out. And, again, that was my fault. The It was shedding wind great. It was just 60 mile an hour winds in the New Mexico desert, and uh, it was super sandy, rocky soil where I couldn't get a stake in good, and uh, I hadn't piled any rocks on my stake, so that was my fault. Um, aside from that, I don't have anything else. That's that's it. Uh, I think Dan Durston did a great job designing this tent. I think that uh, they did an excellent job in producing it, so... Uh, thanks for watching, and like I said, if you want to see my kind of homemade stargazer kit, let me know, and I will uh, make a video on that. Thanks, guys.